Let's go over a few things, shall we? Oh my goodness. So I'm gonna start off the video by giving just a shotgun of a few nitpicks that I had with the game. Um, there's probably more, but these are just the nitpicks I had at the time of making this video. So let's begin. First thing would be when opening boxes. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I was trying to open boxes, I had to constantly realign myself in order to get the button prompt. That was irritating. The parry, albeit not really you know, a mechanic that you would think Spider-Man needs in a, in a game. Good mechanic, but it was a bit finicky. Now, sometimes it would register the parry and sometimes it wouldn't. I thought it was me until I saw other, you know, people who were playing it that said the same thing. Where it's like, eh, it's, it's not really working sometimes. It's, you know, it's a bit hot and cold when playing. I did more gliding than I did swinging. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I'm just thinking, you know, in a Spider-Man game, you would probably want to swing more than glide. However, the gliding is just, it's really fun and it's really efficient, right? Because with the air tunnels, now I'm going really fast. So it's like, if I'm trying to get to point A to point B, obviously I'm gonna glide. I, I, I just don't see why not. It's a cool mechanic, it's faster. Um, I just wish maybe there was, a, you know, some gliding tricks to add on top of that. That would have been cool. I don't know, it just, it just strikes me as a bit odd because it'd be like in a Superman game, where you're doing, you know, you're running instead of flying. It's like, well, it's a Superman game, you would think you'd be flying, but you know, maybe they fix that in the third one, so I guess we have to wait another five years um, for them to get around to doing that, but th that's just something that I noticed. The tricks, tricks are always fun. They're always a great thing to do. It's part of fun of web swinging. However, I notice when it comes to tricks with Peter, he has the same animations for three of his tricks, right? Up, up, up trick, right? If you dive and go up, he has the same, you know, leg animation. If you go left, he has the same leg animation. If you go right, he has the same leg animation. Um, the only one is different when you're doing the, the Rubik's Cube. I'm just like, I had to double check and I do with Miles, and Miles has very two, he has the same tricks, right? On the left and the right, but the, the up one is different. And I'm just like, why didn't Peter get a different trick upon going up? Just certain little nitpick like that that just irritated me because I was like, why? Why? But it is what it is. There's no explanation as to how he gets a suit. I'm not sure if I remember if they explained it in the comics or whatnot, but regardless, okay, I can't see how many people try to explain stuff in the comics and then be like, well, see, it was explained in the comics that we had one issue of and that you should have gotten and blah, blah, blah. No, 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 stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Explain it in the game because you've established a pattern of explaining it in the game, right? You've established a lore of the suits. When it comes to Spider-Man 1, the way he gets his advanced suit was, it, you know, it was, there was something to the story. There was a big epic moment um, of him transitioning and doing the tricks and stuff like that. You know, hello New York. When it came to even Miles Morales, when he gets his new suit, right? Whether it's from Peter or when he designs it himself, there's a big, you know, little cutscene of him swinging around New York because he now has his new suit. And I'm just like, I wanted them to follow that up with Spider-Man 2, where it's like, okay, you now have an updated advanced suit. Let's see why you had to update it. What reason did you have to update it? Um, they, they talked about how he got the tentacles off of, you know, something from Doc Ock or some of the early on in the, in the Sandman fight. And I'm just like, eh, I, 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 it just seems like lazy writing to me. It, it, that's what it felt like to me. Cause it's like, yo, I wanna know why you had to upgrade it. I wanted to sing, give me something that ties into the story of you upgrading it, which you've established in previous iterations. When fighting the lizard, the second phase is nothing new. If I remember, and I'm pretty sure I do remember because he kept killing me, um, there's, there's nothing new with the second phase. He does the same thing, jumps on the wall, you gotta take him down, and that's it. Where every other boss, their second phase, they do something different. Whether it's Venom, whether it's uh, Mr. Negative, whether it's, uh, uh, I can't remember the other boss fight, even Sandman, um, every other boss fight does something different besides Lizard. And I was just like, that's weird, why? So when it comes to finishers, we can only finish one person. Pause, that sounded off. Um, when it comes to finishers, okay, we can only knock out one person instead of two. And what's really crazy is something I said in the, the, the Good, Bad, and the Ugly, which is we can stealth take down two people. But the stealth take down of two people is like lower, lower on the, the, the list of stuff to unlock. I'm just like, 
why can't we do you know, two finishers on two people? And furthermore, we can only do the finishers from the front. There are no finishers from the back, right? You can do stealth takedowns from the back, but there are no finishers from the back. Pause. So it's weird when you're doing a finisher on someone you know, who's not facing you, and then they flip in the animation or the, you know, in the montage, and it's like, uh, okay, I, I, I guess. So I, I think they can, uh, they can do something about that in the next one. I've said this time and time and time again, this is inexcusable, I'm sorry, I don't care what anyone says, there is no new game plus, there's no night and day cycle, you can't even adjust it, that is unacceptable. In addition, there's no combat arena and there's no replayable missions for Peter. The only playable missions right now until we get the patch, which they said is coming out in December. Bruh, you tell me I gotta wait a whole two months to get a patch for the game, are you crazy? Um, is, is with Miles, and that's little Mysterium things that you can replay. Every, when it comes to Peter, there's nothing else you can replay. You're just swinging around and, 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 I mean, hopefully you get a random crime that pops up every once in a while, but I'm just like, all of that is just not good, man. It's really not good for a first party, triple A, Spider-Man sequel exclusive, the biggest game that they have of this year. Just unacceptable. One thing that would be a simple fix is, is the slingshot. You can't slingshot while web swinging. I think it's cool you can slingshot, you know, wherever, wherever else, but you can't slingshot while, while web swinging. I'm just like, why not? Change that, fix it in the next game. You cannot switch to the symbiote suit. Bruh, that is a biggest pet peeve for me. It's unbelievable. Having that from Web of Shadows, which is essentially what this game is, Web of Shadows, whether you like it or not, the fact that we can't switch from the, our suit, our regular suit to the symbiote suit is mind blowing. I don't know how they overlooked that mechanic. I think it's cool that they had the rage mode and you know, like that, but that, that's rage mode. That's not symbiote mode, that's rage mode, okay? So I'm just like, the fact that I have to go to a menu to change the suit, it makes it feel like a suit and not like the symbiote. That's, that's man, that's, I don't say it's game breaking, but it's game breaking when it comes to immersion. The spider sense for me. Now here's the thing, when it comes to enemies, they, they, they have a, a few enemies, although the, the enemies are the same enemies with every single one, right? You have the brutes, you have the other individuals, uh, you know, the, the regular thugs, whatever, but they have that within the symbiote, they have that within the craven, and then you have that with the, you know, the regular thugs. Uh, besides the point, when it comes to the attacks, right? So you have the red attack, you have, you know, the yellow one, which you can parry, and then you have a blue one, which uh, you have to dodge because it's a grab. Um, the thing is, when you have so many enemies coming at you on screen, which is great, it's fine, um, but it's hard because you only get the spider sense, and the spider sense just alerts you of danger. It doesn't tell you if it's going to be, you know, a, 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 parry, a parry attack, it's gonna, it doesn't tell you if it's going to be a grab. And that irritated me because in certain scenarios, I would dodge, um, or I'd be trying to parry, that's what it was, I'd be trying to parry um, to get extra, you know, extra life or extra, you know, a, a gadget or extra bonus, and it would be a grab. I didn't know it was a grab because I couldn't see the attack. I just knew my spider sense was coming, you know, was going off and I needed to do something. So I think maybe if they make the spider sense change a different color, like instead of the enemy, the spider sense changes yellow. And the yellow signifies, hey, this is a different attack, right? It's a different threat level. I think, man, you know, I may do that in my game, okay? <laughs> I, don't do it, Insomnia. I'm gonna do it in my game. I'm gonna do it in my combat arena. Uh, that I'm working on right now. Kickstarter will be coming out momentarily. Hopefully we fund it. If we don't, it is what it is. Uh, but I think, I think that would be maybe a better scenario for the player. So, so because we're gonna be watching the spider sense because that's what we're watching, even though we have people coming at us and stuff like that, because the spider sense is what we're waiting for, is that perfect dodge or that perfect parry mechanic. Um, so I think maybe switching out the colors uh, to the spider sense instead of to the enemy, maybe that would be, you know, just a little more accessible when it comes to, 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 to combat. Here's one thing that really irritated me and just painstakingly, just mind-numbingly dumb. And that is the fact that there is only one contextual move, okay? <laughs> the, the, the one contextual move that we saw in the trailer, okay, in the gameplay trailer, that's it. And the fact is, they have it, the, it's like one of the lowest things on the skill tree. I'm just like, what? <laughs> what? What are you, how is a contextual attack on a skill tree, right? Usually contextual attack is just something you have in the game, right? It's not something that you have to, oh, in order to attack someone 
with this bat right here, you have to get that from the skill tree. In order to smash one against this wall, you have to get that from the skill tree. I'm just like, bruh, no. Imagine, imagine if Batman Arkham Asylum did something like that. In order to use this lamp and smash your face in, you have to upgrade it from the skill tree. I, I, no, bruh, that's not, that, that's, that is not the way to go. They, I don't know who they need to speak to, but that was really dumb. Because I was expecting other contextual you know, moves like that and what, what makes it even worse is that both of them can do it. Miles and Peter can do it. And it's, it's not like it's, it's only for the symbiote. No, he can do it in the red suit. So it's just like, it just makes, us, it just makes a move just seems like something that they wanted to add in that just looked cool. There was no thought behind it. There's no depth behind it. It was just like, hey, they wanted contextual you know, combat, which is something I said. I think we need to add more contextual moves around the environment. And they're like, hey, just throw this in and make it the lowest on the skill tree. I think that's lazy. And I think they can do better. Last but not least, and this is going to be Black Cat. Pointless. Don't, don't, don't have Black Cat in here. There's really no reason to have Black Cat in here. She's nothing more than just an example of a, a tech demo. That's all she was. The little scroll that she had, meaningless. Doesn't move the plot along at all. It's just, why even have her in here other than to let us know she's moved on with her life, she has a girlfriend, whatever, in Paris. I don't care. I, I, I'm sorry. I don't care at all about Black Cat's, you know, uh, sexual ex escapades, okay? I don't... <laughs> And the, the, the whole scroll thing, I thought they were going to go somewhere with it. I was like, oh, this is going to be interesting. You're going to have multiverse or something like that, right? Um, no, it's one short little segment, pointless. It's a waste of the character. Now that I've gone over just my many little gripes and nitpicks, let's get, get a little bit deeper, okay? Let's get to the meat and potatoes of the, of, of the issues that I had. First things first, let's start off with Peter. Peter is a little whiny biatch okay i don't know what to tell you but that's what he is um and it's irritating it's very irritating because i don't know maybe it's just me but i felt like every single time whether it was a symbiote whether he was fighting it was just i'm sorry i'm doing here's the thing if that's the is that the, if that's the peter that they want to go with by all means hey do you insomniac this is your Peter. It's not my Peter. It's your Peter. So if you want to make your Peter a whiny little, you know, irritating, you know, uh, 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 cowering individual, the, you know, that's you. Okay. I'm not saying that's how you want to write him, but that's how he came off to me. That's just me. In addition to that, I feel like they completely nerfed his powers. All right. I don't know, but I remember him taking on the Sinister Six, right? And directly after that, because I had to, rem I had to think about it if my mind was playing tricks on me. I was like, I know he didn't get his ass whooped from the Sinister Six and then go right back into, you know, fighting crime. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. He gets his butt kicked in the center of six where he's on a can in the water. And then he goes right back talking about, hey, I only have, you know, a few broken bones and stuff like that. I got to protect the city. Now I'm just like, huh? What? Didn't he get, he got shanked by Scorpion. That's what happened. And I'm just like, uh, okay. But you tell me you getting stabbed by Craven. Now you just on your deathbed. <sighs> Help me. I can't do it. Oh, I'm jail. I love you. What? Bull crap. That's what I say. I say it's bull crap, but that's just me. But think about this, okay? Think about this. He dies twice in the game. That's correct, twice, okay? He dies through Sandman because if, if, if Miles wasn't there to pick him up, he would have been dead. That's simple as that. He would have died. Uh, secondly, he dies through Craven if it hadn't been for the symbiote. And honestly, you can say he dies through, through Venom. The only reason that Venom doesn't kill him is because it's Harry. So Harry's like, eh, you know, I, we want to save the world together. But I, I don't know, he just seems nerfed. Having said that, when it comes to the suit, I, I, I don't know, maybe it's just me. And you know, it is me, because that's who's doing the review, me. Um, he didn't seem like he did that bad in the suit, right? I, right, am I wrong, am I crazy? I didn't feel like he really was going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs in the suit. He didn't really do anything aggro. If you look back at the game, and especially my second playthrough, every single time the suit goes off, it's in self-defense. That's what it is. I mean, when it, we go through Connors, right? Connors like, hey, you have, we have to kill it. We have to destroy it. He takes the phone, throws it. When it comes to, 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 to you know, even I know what people are going to say, Lucas, what about the Mary Jane segment? Lucas, he tried to kill Mary Jane. And I'm just like, think about it. Think about why that happened. 
First off, it wasn't Peter. It was a symbiote. And it was because she shot that thing at him. That's, that's the reason why that happened. Even when it comes to Miles, everything the symbiote has done has been in self-defense, okay? I would be his attorney. I'd be the symbiote's attorney in court. But like, your honor, the symbiote is innocent. They were, the, they were the aggressor. My client was just defending themselves, okay? That's all my client was doing. That's what I... <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, that's what, I, that's what I would be saying. And even when it came to Mary Jane's segment, he was asleep. Peter himself was asleep. It wasn't even Peter. It was a symbiote. But having said that, I'm not seeing where it was like, yo, he's got to take this suit off. I didn't get to that point in the game. It just, it just didn't strike me. As, it, it never hit me. It was like, yo, he's got to take this off. This man is wilding. Like, as opposed to like Spider-Man 3 with Toby, where he like backhands Mary Jane. It was like... Yo, bruh, you got you you gotta chill, bro. Like, what like what is going on? I didn't get to that point in the game. Maybe it's just I, I, maybe it's just me, but I, I didn't I didn't feel that. I didn't feel like yo, he he's losing himself. He's losing it. He he may have been a little bit of curt, you know, at times, you know, a little little, little short-handed with people. Um, but other than that, I was like, Man, okay, whatever. Now, I want to add on top of that, him not going back to, to Dr. Connors. Because I know people may think that, hey, Lucas, he, he chose not to go back to Dr. Connors in order to save Harry. But you have to understand, Dr. Connors wasn't going to do anything with the suit. Dr. Connors was going to destroy the suit. That's what you have to understand. So, honestly, what he did in the symbiote suit is, is, is practically what he was talking about. Hey, this makes me a better Spider-Man, which, in fact, it did. Because throughout the good chunk of the game, he's trying to get the lizard. But he's trying to get the lizard in order to save Harry. That's his main purpose uh, for the game is trying to save Harry. So, so even, even if he had gone back to Dr. Connors, Dr. Connors would have destroyed the symbiote and Harry would have been screwed anyway. So I don't, I mean, I was trying to think, okay, well, he was being selfish by, you know, not giving the suit back to Harry. But the suit chose him. The, ch the suit chose his dead corpse over Harry. Let that sink in, okay? He had nothing to do with it. Furthermore, if he had gone back to Dr. Connors, Dr. Connors would have destroyed the symbiote anyway. So Harry was going to be up the, you know, up the creek without a paddle regardless. Another issue I had is he constantly says during the, the fight with Miles, he's like, hey, I need the suit. The suit makes me a better Spider-Man. You know, it helps me, you know, protect the people that love MJ and stuff like that. But I'm like, during the time that he had the suit, I don't know which suit you want to refer to because the black suit, the, the black suit, what the hell is that, Insomniac? And the symbiote suit are two different things. I guess the symbiote suit is just a stronger bond of the black suit. Um, whatever. Uh, I guess, I guess it's just semantics at this point. But during the time when it came to the black suit, he, wait, he didn't really, you know, who was he helping? Am I missing something? Did I, did I, did I miss something? I don't know. I played it twice. So maybe I find it very hard that I missed something, but he wasn't really like protecting anybody. You can say maybe he was protecting the lizard, but he wasn't protecting the lizard. The lizard was just a, a means to an end to, to, to save Harry. So I guess you can say he was saving Harry, you know, in, in this whole lizard debacle. Um, I mean, he constantly talks about the lizard doesn't deserve this. Dr. Connors doesn't deserve this, yada, yada, yada. But I was like, bro, the reason why you even chasing him to begin with is really to inject the serum, you know, to, to get it back to Harry, to, to, to help Harry, you know, be, be healthy again, right? So that's, uh, I, I didn't see that. When it came to Aunt Mary Jane, he doesn't really use the suit to protect Mary Jane. I'm trying to think. Yeah, he doesn't use the suit to protect Mary Jane, so I don't know where that came from. Um, I'm trying to think with Craven, maybe with Miles. He uses the suit to protect Miles, I'm thinking, uh, in that scenario. But it just, that, it just fell flat to me, right? It fell flat to me as far as why he needed the suit. Because he really doesn't do anything extravagant. I mean, he does in the lizard, right? He, he makes it uh, uh, easier to inject the lizard, right? Because the suit holds holds the lizard down and stuff like that. I wanted them to heighten things like that. Heighten it where the suit just like, whoa, it makes him feel powerful, it makes him, and they had that with the rage, but outside of the rage, right? Cause you're not constantly in rage mode during the game. So outside of the rage mode, it was just like, okay, well, I'm just regular, Sp I'm just regular Spider-Man. And that's why I think Web of Shadows does it so well because they have the regular, you know, three hit combos and stuff like that with the red suit, but when you change the black suit, 
like even how he hits, there's like a, you know, a, 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 his arms are shaking because there's so much power be behind the hit. And his moves are just with tendrils and stuff like that. His regular basic combat uh, melee is completely changed. And if they had added that, then it would have felt different. But just having a rage mode, which you have to build up to, it was just like, okay, this seems more like a game mechanic as opposed to an actual, you know, a different experience. And that's, that's really an issue I had with the, the symbiote and uh, that, that, that mechanic. I think maybe one thing that possibly could have made it a little bit stronger is if, in fact, he was uh, trying to protect the villains, right? The villains that Craven kills. Maybe he was trying to protect the villains um, in addition to Mary Jane and other, you know, people that, you know, that he wants to save. In addition to people, you know, uh, the civilians. Maybe there's, a, you know, like the, the crane scene. And I was like, yo, without the symbiote suit, he wouldn't have been able to stop the crane scene. That's another issue I had with the lizard fight because... He's fought the lizard before. So I'm like, okay, so if, you, if you've already beaten the lizard before, what really makes this any different? What, what, how are the stakes higher? Because you've seen this before. That, that's, that's, that's just my thing. I just wanted to see, I wanted to see a real change with the symbiote too. So I can see why he was so dependent on it. I couldn't really see or understand why he was so dependent on the symbiote too. Because yeah, it had a cool little things and the tendrils and stuff like that. But I'm just like, okay, your little tentacles, I mean, what, isn't that what we use if we don't have the symbiote? So I'm like, I didn't really feel that sense of power with the symbiote suit, which where, where it made a difference in his everyday life, where it made a difference in combat to that extent, or it made a difference in bosses, or it made a difference in you know, saving civilians, where it's like, oh, this is way easier. Or a difference in web swinging, right? You're, you don't swing any faster with the web, with the, the symbiote suit. You don't, you don't fly any further with the symbiote suit. So I was like, I don't get where this dependency is happening from. I, just, I don't get it other than you know, what, what Peter tells us. Oh, this feels amazing and stuff like that. But it didn't translate well within gameplay, because it was, only a certain amount of time that you felt powerful and that was during rage mode. So one thing that irritated me was when he was confronted by Norman and Norman was like, what did you do to him? And Peter just says, I'm sorry. And I'm just like, why? Bro, why? Why not tell him what's up? What? What? Why not tell him what's going on? Like, hey, I saved your son. Okay. Dr. Connors wanted me to kill your son. I saved him. So I, I'm like, are we going to have one of those scenarios like Spider-Man 3 where, you know, Harry's butler comes out after three years or six years or however long it's been and be like, you know what? Your father did get impaled by the glider. Is that what we're going to have with Dr. Connors where Dr. Connors comes out and is like, you know what? I, the, you know, Spider-Man did save your son because they were fully fused together at a, a you know, cellular level. And I, I advise him to take them both out. Right. I, so, I, I mean, obviously, you probably wouldn't say that because, you know, Norm would probably, you know blacklist him or something or off with his head but I, I just I didn't I didn't like that Peter was just I'm sorry and I'm like even if Peter were to say I'm sorry because of whatever guilt he had or yada 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 Miles was there Miles couldn't stand up for Peter MJ couldn't stand up for Peter I mean MJ we'll get to, <laughs> we'll get to MJ and that that wicked wicked woman um, but no one can stand up for Peter and just like, or no one can stand up for Spider-Man. But like, listen, that's not what happened. You know, they, he saved you. MJ couldn't put out an article, right? MJ, you couldn't put out an article for your man trying to say, hey, this is him saving Harry or he tried to save Harry or how Harry got saved by Spider-Man. Something, you're just gonna let, you're just gonna th let him be thrown under the bus? I'm sorry. I didn't like that. It was dumb. I didn't like Norman even coming at him like that because this is the same guy that had security. Okay, he had top flight security within the Norman Oscorp Industries talking about a 12 foot symbiote monster talking about non lethals. Okay, just get it off of him. What? What are you stupid? What are you talking about? The, the, he knows that his son destroyed an entire building. In addition to that, the people that were on his payroll used lethals. They were shooting at your boy. So what are you talking about? The people that you employed tried to kill your boy. And now you want to be upset at, at Spider-Man who clearly, who clearly saved him. He, they, the, the, the EMT was like, hey, there's a, a light pulse. So he's not even dead. He's not even dead, which is so, 
We'll get to Harry, but I'm just like, what are you upset about, bro? You don't even know what happened. And you're just gonna blame Spider-Man by default? It, it just, it's piss poor writing. Like I said, I hate this story. I despise the story with God, with every cell in my being. One last thing when it comes to Peter, one thing I didn't understand is that, that if you play the flame mission, right? The flame, you find out Cletus Cassidy, which is, it was so obvious. Like they, they really oversold it. Like, okay, he has a shirt with the red on it. Like, okay, I, hmm, I wonder who could this could be. Anyways, he, he gets a symbiote. And I'm thinking to myself, wait, this was being transferred uh, by Oscorp. And I'm like, if they already have a symbiote, another symbiote, why aren't they giving it to Harry? Why isn't that symbiote going to Harry? Like, what's the G serum if you already have another symbiote? Like, how many symbiotes do they have? And if they do, why don't they just put another symbiote on Harry? And if Norman or, or if Connors, Dr. Connors has told them, hey, don't put another symbiote because it'll kill him or whatever, then shouldn't you be thanking Spider-Man for saving your son? I, I just, I didn't, I don't understand that. Don't get it. This now leads us to MJ. I hate MJ, no, no, look at me, look at me. I hate MJ. I hate her design. I hate how she's written. I hate how she sounds. I hate how she looks. I hate everything about Mary Jane in this game. Everything. And I mean everything. There is honestly, thinking about it right now, there's really not any likable characters in this game. Maybe Miles? But aside from that, I, like, I can't stand Peter because he's so whiny, and, you know, he's just a pain. Uh, Mary Jane, complete uh, biatch. Miles is okay, I guess. He's really not really, there's nothing really to say bad or good about Miles. He's just there, all right? His essay in Mr. Negative. Um, Norman, Harry, it's just, I don't know. There's no one that really stands out. But back to the Wicked Witch of the West, and that is Mary Jane. Um, she is horrible. Let's start off with the obvious, with the whole strong woman, you know, act that, that's going on. I get it. I don't have a problem with strong women. I just have a problem with how they write strong women. Like, they're overdoing it with the motorcycle and the helmet, like, <laughs> okay. All right, I get it, I, get, I understand, gotcha, gotcha, all right? But you, you have, there has to be some push and pull to a character. That's what they fail to understand. When it comes to Mary Jane, think about this. She's being chased by the symbiote. Do you remember that? She's being chased by the symbiote. She nearly dies, okay? Now, what does she begin to do the next day? Who do you think you would probably tell if you found out that your boyfriend, okay, who has superhuman powers, was asleep when they were chasing you and trying to murder you. Who do you think would probably be on the top of your list? I don't know. My guess would probably be the, your boyfriend, right? My guess would probably be Peter. Do you want to know how she goes about asking Peter, hey, do you remember when you tried to murder me? She goes out and says, hey, do you remember what happened last night by any chance? Do you have to just, just passive aggressive, just evil, just, Oh, I can't stand this woman. She reminds me of just like, she's a Karen. That's what she is. Just a passive aggressive. Do you know what happened? Do you remember anything about last night? No? Okay, that's very interesting. Whoa, what are you doing? What are you that's what she is. Peter, I want you to think about that. That's why I'm saying Peter doesn't know. Think about, he doesn't know. He doesn't know that he tried to uh, assassinate his girlfriend. Think about the toll that that would make on the story. MJ is telling him, hey, that suit that you have tried to destroy me. Now Peter is at a dilemma where it's like, no, I, I, right? Where he may go through the, the, like the stages of, group, uh, of grief, where he's like, I don't believe it. No, you're lying. There's no way it would do that. There's no, right? Because now he's like, yo, this amazing, awesome suit that I have, which I've now been able to save people with. I have superpowers, okay? Now you're telling me this amazing thing. You tell me I have to give it up? because it almost hurt one of the, 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 one of the people that I love the most next to Aunt May? No, I did like, that would be so much right there, so much. And they just throw it out the window. 
she is absolutely a pain. She ends up telling Miles. And the only reason I know is because we were in the second playthrough where Miles was like, hey, you end up hurting uh, Mary Jane, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, wait, you're telling me she told Miles about Peter nearly, you know, Xing her, you know, uh, uh, deleting her in, in the tunnel, but didn't tell Peter? What makes it even worse is that she starts to write this hit piece on him before this even happens. Think about this. The only reason she writes a hit piece on, on Peter is because he doesn't see why she's so upset about him chasing the lizard. You know, the giant lizard which he has no control over, she's acting like he pur purposely made the lizard go into the museum. He's act she's acting like he did not at every single chance he got to try and stop and mitigate the damage that the lizard was doing. Upon him saying, you know, what, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to just let him roam free? She's like, that's not the, you know what? I think I found my news for my article for J. Jonah Jamerson. She is a con. That's what she is, okay? Hopefully I don't get flagged by YouTube, but that's what she is. She is horrible. She's always horrible to him, always. He's professing his love, constantly just a giddy boy around her. And she's just like, yeah, okay, maybe. Well, I don't know if I want to move in with you. Well, I mean, is that what you really want? I mean, mm. and she's like, she's not even attractive. Mary, listen to me. Mary Jane could get away with this if she was a bombshell, okay? Like in the comics, if she was fine, okay? If she was a bombshell, if she was fine, then I could somehow justify Peter being like, you know what, mm, I'm going to let her slide. She's fine as hell, so I'm going to let her have this attitude. She's fine as hell, I'm going to let her be passive aggressive in this case, okay? She's not even fine, she looked like a man. We have a trans woman as Mary Jane, and you want me to deal with her attitude, with her nonsense throughout the game? This is shite writing. The writing is garbage. They've made me despise the one thing in Peter's life that he's living for. I want her to die in the game. I want her to be done. I'd rather her be yeeted than freaking Aunt May. Then we get into the gameplay. Listen, listen, listen. The moment in time, listen Insomnia, come closer. Come closer. The moment in time where we have more Mary Jane gameplay than Venom, you screwed up. Okay, you done screwed up. You messed it up, all right? The game, throw it in the trash, redo it. Because that is foolishness. And then, you give her, I guess, the best equipment known to man? You give her, a, like, some laser gun that apparently takes out everyone. Just one shot, all right? One shot. She's stealth killing, like, uh, 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 the... The, the soldiers and stuff. And even, because he, here's the thing, I try to rationalize this in my brain. I'm like, Lucas, you know what? Spider-Man stealth hits, you know, the people with one shot, all right? If you can get behind them and stealth, stealth you know, knock them out, Spider-Man can do it. But here's the thing, even if she spotted, right? The game doesn't end, and I agree, that's not really a good mechanic to just punish the player so harshly like that. But, come on, she's just, Someone's looking at her, she's just going, chee, chee, chee. she's like Striker from MK1 or something. Just, Kee. I'm just like, what is going on here? And then it gets to the point where she sees his web shooters down in his, like, his base, Peter's base, and she's just like, oh, I'm gonna attach this to the gun and make web shooters with it. How? Mary Jane, how? How did you do that, okay? Peter's a damn genius, okay? Which is the reason why he created his, his gadgets, his web shooters. How did you do it in the fraction of the time, huh? How did you manage to do that? It just, I hate this character. I hate MJ. I hate her, bro. I hate her. I hate her. It doesn't make any sense. And then they have her, listen, and listen to the story. You already know the story because this is a story, you know, this is a spoiler video. But Imagine, right, your big master plan is, is whole, you know, Spidey and friends. Ready, go, we're gonna go, let's do this, guys. What they do is send her to the home of the symbiote, okay? The hive of the symbiote. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? 
during our time fighting Venom, we're saving civilians in the bus and stuff like that because they're attacking people on the streets. But we're gonna send little Mary Jane with her little sonic pistol to the hive of the symbiote to get one of the most valuable things to the story in Venom and the whole, the whole plot. And just magically, I guess Oscorp leaves around sonic little tanks which she can shoot. It, may, it falls apart, bro. It falls apart. And then they give her a boss fight. They give her a boss fight. You know the same people where it takes it. Bro, I have used all of my gadgets. I have uh, used all of my symbiote powers. I have used symbiote rage and still not have been able to fully deplete the, the, the life of those big fat symbiotes. And she's over here just pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew, pew. What? 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 What were you thinking? Hmm? What were you thinking? That's it. You weren't thinking, Insomniac. You guys were brain dead when it came to Mary Jane. Absolutely brain dead. It makes no sense. Her, her gameplay, I get it. You have greatly improved on her gameplay by making her... I don't know, like a jujitsu expert or something. Like she's just kicking, sweeping the leg and kicking. I get it. I, I, I really, I really do. I really do. For whatever reason, you guys are just tied to Mary Jane. Let her go. Be like Frozen. Let her go. She does not need to be in the game. She does not need to be a playable person. She is not very important in the game. I get in the story, but as far as a gameplay perspective, please let this die out. And the sad part is, I know you won't. I know you won't. Because whoever's at Insomniac, I don't know if it's Bright in the heart or the person uh, above him, they're like, include Mary Jane. Make her, make her, if they don't like it, make them like her. I'm sorry, it's impossible. You've screwed her character. You've done it. You, you, you screwed her character completely. You made her look like a man. She acts like a man and her gameplay is like a man. I'm just, <laughs> I'm being a bit hyperbolic, but am I though? Am I? I'm just saying she's unlikable. I don't want to play as her. She's trash. I don't care what you do to her. Give her web wings. Give her a freaking, give her the, the, the freaking uh, web shooters. I don't, bro. I don't care. I don't like her. She's not a good person. Moving on, we now have Harry. Let's just start off by saying there's not enough Venom. Lucas, there's, what? There's not enough Venom, okay? I wanted more, more. That's correct, more. No, keep going, more. No, keep going, more. 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 Venom was was Spider-Man 2, that was the game. Venom. Ain't nobody give a damn about any Craven, bruh. Nobody give a damn about any Craven. What are we talking about? We were here for Venom. We are Venom. That's what we were here for. And y'all hold this man. Hold this man, okay? Y'all hold Craven, but we'll get there. Y'all hold this man. Why? I don't know. I have no clue. Why are we playing more Mary Jane than Venom? I don't know. When it comes to Harry, listen, I've already said this about the walkie talkies. I know you guys think you're cute with the game playing, like, hey, we're gonna have him ride a bicycle to school and do like these flashbacks. I don't like flashbacks. Flashbacks are stupid, okay? They're dumb. Not always, but how you do them, Insomniac? Freaking brain dead. Don't do them. That's dumb. You want to know a way for it to have the player to feel more, uh, uh, I don't know, welcoming to Harry? To have us be involved and invested in the character? The present. That's correct. The present. They can talk about the past all they want. Bro, we didn't need the flashback to the high school and all. We didn't need that, bro. We don't, we don't need that. Y'all could have talked about it. What we needed was present Harry. The missions of having Harry where he's Agent Venom were the best thing you could have done. The best thing. Because it was, it was beneficial to building the bond between me and Harry, 
at, from a player perspective, but also from a story perspective, right? Because you can imagine what he's going through helping like your best buddy is a superhero just like you. So now it's like, yo, I, I, I like you, Miles, but now like, yo, my best bud who came back from dead, you know, is now a superhero and I get to do super missions. I get to save the world, you know, with my best buddy. That, that was awesome, right? Having him learn on the, on the, you know, on the, on the ropes or learn while he's, you know, being Spider-Man or, or Agent Venom, or whatever, or his particular character, right? Because they don't actually ever call him Agent Venom. But having him learn and asking Peter for guidance, it was like miles all over again, but, but a stronger bond because you knew that, you know, Harry, it's Harry Osborn. It's just the homie. So I, I thought that was great, the missions. I think it was just one mission, I think. If, I'm not, if I re recall, I think it was just Tombstone. Um, I thought that was awesome. Do more of that as opposed to taking us back in time. It's usually very, it's, it's, I've seen very few games who have been able to go back in time and do it well, okay? Very few games. I say focus on the present, okay? Build, I know we already have a relationship with Harry. Build it up in the present because we're building a new relationship because the, what we had before isn't the same what we have now. Harry isn't the same person that we knew him uh, to be back in high school with now, right? So why focus on that when we can focus on who he is now in the present and build that bond with the character, build that bond with the player, which, you know, is gives us a bigger payoff in the end. I didn't really have that, you know, that emotional connection with the, with Venom or Harry or anything like that because I didn't really know, I didn't, I didn't know Harry. I like Venom, but I didn't really know this Venom until later on where, where a great scene where he's like, yo, I'm done, I'm tired, you know, Harry's just given up. And that, that was really crazy because it was a point in time where he's like, you're just gonna have to, and Venom takes over, he's like, you're gonna have to kill us. And I was like, yo, this man is nothing but a shell. Like Venom is just using him like a, 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 a puppet, just like a, a literally not even a good host. You're just really there for the ride. Like you're not even in control of your body anymore. Like that was awesome. That was amazing. Everything else could have just been, you know, you, you could have trimmed the fat because it wasn't needed. For, for, in my opinion, it wasn't needed at all. Then there was a segment of Harry getting upset at Peter when he was, uh, uh, I don't know, being, you know, uh, 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 praised by, by Norman of how, how much of a good friend he was and how awesome he was. But the thing is, Norman wasn't saying that from like Peter as, as Peter. He was saying that from the perspective of him being a good friend to Harry, right? He wasn't just praising him, and it threw me off because once he becomes Venom, Venom is like, hey, you took my father's love, or he always loved you. I forgot the line or whatever. I was like, what are you talking about? He took your father's love, or, you, or he loved you, or loved uh, Peter more. Like, this man, Norman, has gone above and beyond to make sure you are alive. Like, above and beyond. And now you're trying to resent Peter? I... I it didn't make any sense to me. Unless you wanna be like, okay, well he's showing, he thinks that Peter is such a good friend, but Peter is really backstabbing me because he's keeping the suit and, and whatnot. Maybe that angle I was thinking, maybe possibly, but it just, it just didn't, it didn't, it didn't hold up. And then once he gets the, the symbiote, it was just like, um, I didn't feel, I didn't feel that, that hatred, that rage that he had. And apparently the symbiote didn't feel that way either because the symbiote just wants to heal the world. So he just took that to a whole nother level where I think with Eddie Brock, Eddie Brock, there was a hatred. There was a hatred of Spider-Man there that, that, that bonded with the symbiote, that the symbiote hated Peter because it rejected him. So that bond was way more strong than, you know, the bond of we're going to heal the world, but... By healing the world, we're gonna turn everyone into symbiote. So it was like I really didn't, really didn't think that the symbiote was that bad, right? <laughs> I, maybe it's just me, but I'm like, okay, he wants to heal the world, but how he wants to go about healing the world probably isn't the best thing, right? Turning everybody into symbiotes and stuff like that, and to have this hive mind probably isn't, you know, the best way to go about healing the world. Nor do I think that you know that was your ultimate goal as opposed to making a new world for yourself here on planet Earth. But that's, you know, that's besides the point. I just, I didn't really feel Venom being the bad guy. That's what I feel, because I didn't think Harry was the bad guy. I think, I thought Harry 
had the temperament of a saint. Because you have to think about this. All this time, Harry's like pretty much being, you know, passive aggressive with Peter, where Peter's like, how about you pop some more pills in and tell us how you really feel? But Harry is the one really suffering, right? And I don't think we really get that suffering. And I think that suffering, the only thing we get is with him going back on the cane. Like, I wanted him to really feel some pain, which would then cause him to feel anger and hatred for, for Peter. But that doesn't accumulate until later on, where until finally he's like, hey, you want me to die? Is that what you want? And he hits the thing. I thought that was weak. I was like, yo, listen, he could have had some rage early on. Because I'm sure what he's going through isn't pleasant. I'm sure there had to be some pain or something where he's like, but he's always so passive. He's always so pe so docile. Hey, Pete, I really need this suit. Hey, I really wish you could bring it back or whatnot. You know, listen, fool, you're dying, bro. You on your deathbed. If you don't get that suit back, it's a wrap. It's finito. So there wasn't that, there wasn't that, 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 I don't know, that necessity that, that, that like, yo, you've got to get this suit back. So, so when Peter's like, you know, I, you know, they're coming up with a new cure for him. He'll be fine. Like I can do better with the suit. I kind of agreed with him because I didn't feel that urgency from, from Harry. I didn't feel that, that urgency. Like, yo, I need this, bro. I'm dying. Like, I, I, come, Harry, don't you care about me? Like, bro, what's going on? Like, I didn't, I didn't get that. And by the time he did show some emotion, it just wasn't a big payoff. And I just like, eh. You don't really have that much hatred for you to become Venom. And once again, the hatred wasn't even there with Venom. Venom wanted to heal the world. <laughs> like, we're going to heal the world. I don't know. He didn't seem that big of a threat. I mean, aside from obviously being Venom and, you know, ripping heads off and stuff like that. But uh, it, it seemed kind of forced, right? The gameplay of Venom didn't match up with, I would say, the motive of Venom. He just seemed venom in his actions but it didn't seem justified. It didn't feel like he, he worked for that. That's what it felt like in the story. It just didn't feel like, eh, you didn't really work for you being this vicious and whatnot. And I didn't see it. Because even still, when he's talking to Spider-Man, he doesn't kill Spider-Man, right? He doesn't kill, he knocks him out, but he never actually kills Spider-Man because at the end of the day, Harry, like, they want to do it together. So I really, did, I don't know, it didn't feel like Venom was that, that, that killer, that real killer threat to, 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 to Peter. Because I was like, there's times like he could have just easily gone and tossed him, tossed him aside. Um, I, I think it wasn't later towards the end where the, the Venom, the symbiote, fully takes over. Where it's like, okay, he really has no attachment to Peter. It's kind of like, yo, you can help us. If not, cool, get out of our way. <laughs> Lastly, when it comes to Harry, him still being alive completely undermines his whole arc to me. It just completely undermines his whole arc. It kind of lessens the, the impact that Norman has with hating Spider-Man. It's like, okay, well, your son's back, but he's also alive, right? And Norman always has that sense of hope. As long as there's a sense of hope there, Norman's going to keep on trying. So it's like you really need to remove his hope because he's still alive. I know the doctor says there's very, you know, very low chance he comes out of this, but there's still a chance, right? That's where Norman is. Like, yo, just keep him alive. I'll figure out a way. Get the G serum. So I'm like, if he had, like, if they had just committed to that and let Harry die, then we could justify what did you do to him? He's dead, right? What, what did you do? Why, like, why'd you, how, why'd you kill my son? Or even better yet, maybe Harry's like, yo, uh, I mean, maybe that's why they keep Harry alive. Because maybe there's a second where Harry comes back alive to with, with, with Miles, which was so freaking stupid, so freaking dumb. It's like, okay, he's dead, but somehow your electric powers cause him to come back alive for a split second for him to say, Peter, uh, 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 dumb, just, absolutely, just really dumb. But maybe he comes back alive in Spider-Man 3 for a split second before he passes on and tells Norman who they are. Like, yo, it was Peter. Peter's the one that took the suit from me. He allowed me to die or something, something. But that's not, here's the thing, that's not going to happen because Harry is like, hey, listen, the only way for you to stop, stop them is to, for you to kill us. Like, we heal the world together. So they don't even end on a bad note. So I don't even know why they even kept him alive. Just end him. His story was good. We, you know, he did it, for, saved the world together, yada, 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 and done. So I... I just think it was sloppy riding with Harry, complete sloppy riding. This now leads us 
to Craven. And I'm going to end it with Craven because Mr. Negative, cool. I'm glad Mr. Negative had his little redemption arc, yada, yada. Made no sense to me while Miles gets superpowers while being around Mr. Negative. And while Mr. Negative, you know, puts all of his powers in, 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 in Peter, causing him to be anti-venom, whatever. I, they're clearly doing something new, fine, by all means. It just, the logic didn't make sense why he gets powers. I'm sure there's someone who'll be able to explain it. Well, you need to understand that it makes sense because, sure, you can rationalize anything in a video game. It just is what it is. Nevertheless, going back to Craven, Craven was pointless. There was no reason for Craven to even be here. Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, he wasn't even here, okay? We don't even see Craven until like the third part of, you know, the, 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 the story. And I'm just like, what? What? Uh, like, what? Dumb. Absolutely dumb. Completely did not justify the character. Underutilized. What would have been cool if they had something like Taskmaster, where while you were saving, you know, civilians or saving the, the, the villains, which he tries to kill off, which is like, yo, one of the best parts of Craven. You don't even show us. Do you understand? One of the best lethal parts about Craven being a hunter, you don't even show us Insomniac. He kills off this man's whole rose gallery for the most part, and you don't even show us that. You give us little audio, audio tapes of what? Who thought this through? This is the, this is the cardinal sin that God of War did, where it's like, you don't even show us meeting his wife. You don't even show us the years of, of like what happened in between that. We just come out in the next game with Atreus, with some child that we don't have no attachment to. <sighs> I'm sick and tired of them doing that. So this was just like just bad, bad gameplay wise, bad story wise. And I'm just like, you don't see him hunting. And like I was saying, if we had seen him like stalking us, right? Or if he was hunting like Scorpion or he was hunting the vulture and we had to stop him. And every single time we stopped him, the hunter learned something new. So what he learned in the vulture, the next time where he, we tried to save out of the rhino, we couldn't use the same tactic. It would be a callback to Mr. Freeze in, a, what is it, Arkham Asylum, where you couldn't use the same, you couldn't defeat him the same way because he would learn. I think that would show that Craven, once again, he's studying you. Where he really wasn't trying to kill Scorpion, he wanted to see how you would fight, how you would attack and try to save him. And then he would learn until ultimately he was the big bad. Where it was like, okay, well, what, it doesn't seem like he wanted to actually kill the Vulture. It seemed like he was just toying with me, right? And it eventually leads to, okay, well, Spider, now I've studied you, now you are the final prey. Um, something like that, right? I just, I just think that would have been better. One thing didn't make any sense, where he looks at, at Peter once he gets the symbiote suit, and he's like, oh, my final hunt. I'm like, pause, Pimpin. Let's, 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 take, a let's take it back to memory lane. You got your ass handed to you by Harry, okay? A dude who's been in a tank, uh, 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 a tank for, for half his life or whatever, who just came out. You got your ass handed to him by, by, by that dude, okay? The only reason he didn't kill you is because he went over to, to Peter once Mary Jane was like, Harry, that's the only reason he didn't kill you. Like him even saying that, my final hunt, you had blood in your teeth, pimpin'. You had blood in your teeth. You talking about, oh, my final hunt, yes. I was, Bro, how about you try to feed Harry before you start talking about taking on uh, uh, Peter? It was just, that was dumb to me. Just completely dumb. Uh, just, <sighs> anyways, um, I think Craven was pointless in this, in this game. Um, they didn't really utilize him. He just seemed kind of just there. We never see him hunt. We never see him. <laughs> it's just like, you're just a killer. That's what you are. You're a murderer, okay? They just, your, your, your team brings people to you to kill. That's it. Like, there's no... There's no character behind you. You're just a psychopath, right? You're not actually studying your prey and learning how they move and learning their weaknesses, learning who they love, who they cherish, right? How, what their weak points are, what their strengths are. You're, we're not getting any of that. We're just getting, don't fail me again. Ah, the spider, my final hunt. Long story short, I just think uh, Craven was not used to his potential. That's what it boils down to.
Anyways, guys, that's the video. Let me know what you guys think. Whether or not you believe, Lucas, Lucas, you're, you're wrong, okay? You're just nitpicking, okay? I know that's the title of the video, but you're wrong, okay? The game is flawless. It's perfect. It's the greatest masterpiece ever. Or if you haven't believed, you know what? A lot of the complaints you had, I had too, you know? I think uh, Craven was underutilized. I think Venom, we needed way more Venom. I think Mary Jane can go. I think Miles is... Miles, I get, you know, poor guy with this essay while, you know, Peter's fighting for his life. But anyways, <laughs> regardless, uh, let me know what you guys think. If you happen to disagree, well, you're in luck because today is disagreement day. We typically have it Friday through Sunday. There'll be a number on the screen you call in. We duke it out. Either or, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, comment, which I know you will. Subscribe, all right? Oh, that fun stuff. Until next time, guys, be amazing. How? Mary Jane, how? How did you do that, okay?